The cycle of seed to table embodies a way of life, a life made from values and traditions handed down from generation to generation in Wisconsin for more than 150 years. This cycle is deeply rooted in heritage and custom, yet agriculture in the state constantly faces modern challenge and opportunity. Increasing cost and an evolving industry put stress on the seed to table process, though technology offers hope for better yields and new practices. Through both adversity and innovation, tradition lives on, it grows. Every step builds off the last, through fields, families, and communities. Visit a local seed company defending tradition while fighting for relevance among chemical company giants. Discover clean energy in the dirtiest of places, the floor of a cow barn. Meet the people who make sure food reaches the tables of Wisconsin's hungry. Sit down to a harvest meal handed down from grandmother to mother to daughter. Explore how the Wisconsin seat to table journey embraces a past while driving innovation. We manage our, our business and our relationships such that we, we like to, to, to hope that our field people feel like there's a big, there's a very strong connection to what's going on here. Um, not only our field people, but we like to take that down as far to the customer level as we can. And so that customers are aware of, of who we are, what we're doing, how we're doing it. They're welcome here anytime. We host them as much as we can to make them feel like they're part of this. And they're part of the decision process. And, and, and in effect, they are. Our industry has become dominated by the chemical companies, you know, for better or for worse. I think generally for better, but um, I think farmers are kind of scratching their head. They're not as easy to do business as, with as a rank seed is. Um, but they've brought you know, tremendous gains, tremendous innovation, tremendous technology to our industry that wasn't there 20 or 25 years ago. Obviously, the big challenge is a huge disparity in size. <laughs> um, you know, we have to compete really against, you know, on, on certain levels, we have to compete, compete against companies like Dow, Monsanto, DuPont, who are building to build a company. Most business still is a relationship business, and we're pretty good as far as we actually stress and we actually enjoy working, having personal relationships with, with, other, with our customers and with our dealers. We have a lot of farmer dealers still, where a lot of the, the bigger companies abandoned them. You know, they know everybody in the neighborhood and they trust them. They also farm, so they, you know, they know they're using the same products. I would say it's a good business relationship. I trust them. You know, I feel they trust me. And trust has a lot to do with any business. Because if you don't have trust, you got to spend more time focusing on making sure somebody isn't pulling one over on you or, you know, this or that. But I really trust Rank, and it goes from the seed I'm getting. I trust them, and it, you build trust on experience. Seed is the fuel, the beginning, the driving force of Wisconsin agriculture. Seed feeds more than 1.27 million dairy cows a year, who in turn produce more than 3.16 billion gallons of milk a year. Farmers all over Wisconsin are maintaining the dairy state's proud tradition while embracing innovation. It's a different world today. Forty years ago, we went out and spread a load of manure wherever we could get to with a two-wheel drive tractor. Today, it's all calculated and, and uh, analysis is done on the cropping side or the land, and, 
And so it's a different world. And it's very important that this next generation can come in and take over th that side of the technology that um, I did not grow up with and, I, and I'm not as efficient as they are. One thing about the methane digesters, um, it reduced a lot of odor from the manure. We live in a very urban area, uh, very close to Fond du Lac. Um, so my original intention was to basically do this as a neighborly, friendly uh, venture. And if I could break even, that would be really a good deal. We have to remember as a, as a digester, it's, it's just almost like a living creature. Um, it has a specific diet, things can upset the digester, so you have to be very careful with the additions that you do. Um, if we look at the, at the, call it the circle of life of the digester, uh, being able to um, have a fertilizer product that is ideal for a growing crop, that creates feed that the cows can eat, and then, of course, the cows have excrement, and so we collect that and put it back to the digester and uh, create a heating process within that digester that then is going to make a, a very um, cow-friendly bedding product to go right back for the cows to lay on. Um, and then the cycle starts all over again with the fertilizer back on the field to grow the crops. And so can you point out one specific thing? I think that's really tough to do. have a, um, a meter, electric meter, that uh, meters all the electricity we produce. We sell all that we produce and buy back what we use. And now with the two systems that we're running, we're, our goal is to be more like 800 homes. And if you take your average township of, of ours with, um, I believe, 3,000 people, uh, we can pretty much supply almost the whole, all the homes in, in our township with electricity. Wisconsin, though, has been very progressive in terms of, of any state in the U.S. of being a leader in, in anaerobic digestion. And I think a lot of that's because of dairy cows. So we've seen a progression over uh, the last 10 years of farms embracing that. Um, I think the last statistics would say that Wisconsin still has the most digesters of any state in the U.S. When it comes to the dairy state, Verclair is just one of many farms. Spread across Wisconsin's 72 counties is more than 15 million acres of farmland. For every five acres of land in Wisconsin, two are farmland. However, food insecurity in Wisconsin has increased throughout the past 15 years. The boost in nationwide food stamp benefits from the Recovery Act ended October 31, 2013, putting added stress on food insecure families. Under these circumstances, some families may be forced to look elsewhere to find a sufficient food supply, like local food pantries such as the one at the Catholic Multicultural Center in Madison. <laughs> Bueno, yeah. aquí vienen de toda clase de personas, vienen americanos, vienen latinos, y todos los atendemos por igual. <risa> eh, en Madison hay mucha necesidad, hay, se tiene muchas personas que necesitan de alimentos puesto que los, el salario que reciben es muy mínimo, entonces esas personas vienen al centro Guadalupe a la despensa para obtener alimentos y así ayudar esa carga inmensa que tienen para sostener eh, eh, tres hasta cuatro hijos. We look at our pantry as a way of um, trying to provide or prevent homelessness. Um, food is expensive, so if people 
don't have to spend money on food. They can afford their um, potentially their rent or or medicine or gas for the car so they can keep their job. Different things like that. Una. Esos uh, son en chocolate. Uh, puedes sacar algo que no okay. necesite porque lleva mucha libra. But this is kind of a one-stop shop, and I think one thing that makes us unique too is that it's a place where a lot of people just have a lot of trust and feel very comfortable. And I've heard several times from people, "This is my home," or also, "This is my home away from home." From, for some people, lo lo más importante desde los siete años que llevamos aquí mi esposa y yo trabajando con la comunidad. Lo más importante es hacer sentir bien a las personas. Uh -huh. Con una sonrisa, con un apretón de manos, se da, se da todo. Sí. sí. Lo estamos dando todo. Porque es, como dice mi esposa, es difícil venir a mendigar, a pedir un, un pedazo de pan. ¿Ve? Pero el que tiene hambre se ve la necesidad de venir a pedir ese pedazo de pan. Our food pantry, I think what makes ours unique is that we always have bilingual volunteers in there. We do tend to try to have different items in our food pantry that cater a lot to Latinos, such as um, rice, dry beans, um, oils, uh, different things like that. So we do try to provide those kind of things. And then Fresh vegetables, again, are very popular among a lot of people, which I was hoping would be the case, but wasn't really sure that that would be the case. Tenemos un, un lugar en el U.S. y entonces allá cada año se, se siembra tomate, se siembra muchos vegetales. Entonces eso se siembra eh, por ahí en, en, en mayo. Y ya para esta fecha se recoge todo. Todo esto es para Adriana. Usted crea que no necesita. Y nosotros aquí lo hacemos de corazón. Nosotros, nuestro tiempo libre lo, lo damos aquí voluntariamente y lo hacemos con todo el corazón y con el alma para que la gente se sienta bien. In 2012, the volunteers at the Catholic Multicultural Center served 24,182 meals and provided families with more than 2,000 bundles of food from the food pantry. Volunteers at the CMC, like Carmen and Alfredo, help strengthen their community by providing families with one of their most basic needs, food. Wisconsin mother Laura Dunnick also depends on the community to feed her family. Households like Laura's pay an annual fee to receive fresh meat and produce from local farms as part of the community-supported agriculture program. Households and farmers work together to make CSA thrive. Mmm, looks good. Doing. I was hoping he would stop by so I could visit with him. Oh, in the morning she's hard. She's coming. She's uh about how much? Two dollars. We have a very strong phone. I don't know how many, but they're all very special people. Remember I mentioned that movie Food Incorporated? Literally the next day, I, I haven't bought meat at a grocery store since I saw that movie. It's like, I'm done. I'm out. I, I just can't. Um, so I did a, just an internet search, a Google search, on CSAs and found her that way through the Wisconsin Community Shares Coalition. And um, she, she's amazing.
Okay. So we get meat like that, and they decide really what comes in the box. But you can also tell them, you know, I'd like a ribeye or I'd like a turkey, and you know, you can pay extra for items, or they'll swap things out for you too. So I think it's their fourth or fifth year with her. Actually, the chicken and his, the quality of the meat's amazing. So good, so much better. You really get flavor, whereas I feel like at the grocery store sometimes it's so bland. The upside is I have all these new friends. <laughs> the farmers that produce our food are just the nicest, kind-hearted, most kind-hearted people you'd ever care to know. For them, it's really rewarding to work directly with the people they're feeding because it means a lot to them. You know, they're raising these animals and looking these animals in the eyes and knowing that they're providing for our family and who we are and, you know, preserving our health um, means a lot to them. It's a lot more meaningful for them, for the work that they do as farmers, to have that personal connection with us. So it's a win-win. that's been in the family for at least a couple decades. So it's, uh, it's her recipe, right, because her dad grew up on a farm. So it's her recipe for fall when there's all the harvest comes in. You have so many vegetables, what do you do with them? It's an awesome, basically, that's why she calls it almost too. So these are the tomatoes that I bought, a whole bushel from Farmer Bob, and then I canned those. And then cut up the leek, the onion, and some garlic and mix that in with the meat. You can put any meats in that you want. So then after that, I just cut the bonanza vegetables that I had out. So there's celery, there's carrots, there's cauliflower, there's a zucchini, actually two zucchinis, and um, there's green beans and yellow beans. So literally there's like eight or 10 different vegetables in there, along with meat from Lois's farm and tomatoes from Farmer Bob. That's a bowl for my grandma's kitchen. I have my cereal. All right, sweet thing. You have dinner. And so do we. Consumers like Laura are rediscovering the complex food landscape in Wisconsin. From seeds to garden vegetables to dairy and meat products, from restaurant creations to simple home cooked meals, the food appearing on Wisconsin tables is changing. From seed to table, the tradition lives on.